Despite any reservations he might have had about Cheney's selective memory, Detective Armstrong contacted Vallejo Police Chief Garlington, requesting assistance in the investigation, and eventually an agreement was made whereupon detectives from both jurisdictions would combine their efforts in conducting a new interview of Allen. Detective Jack Mullinax was tasked with gathering more background information on the suspect. Although Mullinax was able to obtain numerous samples of Allen's handwriting from a source who wished to remain anonymous, he was unable to locate the report written by Sergeant Lynch almost two years previously. Detective Mullinax made contact with Allen's former employer, who owned a service station in Vallejo. The owner described Allen as an honest and efficient worker, but who showed too much of an interest in small children, including one of the owner's three daughters. Mullinax learned from the man that Allen had recently taken his young daughter aboard his boat without her father's knowledge or permission. Mullinax wrote in his report, while on boat, Allen is alleged to have made improper advances towards the girl. The owner did not report Allen's behavior to police and had not seen him since the incident, which he said occurred approximately six weeks earlier. On July 27, 1971, Mullinax met with inspectors Toski and Armstrong and their Armstrong shared his thoughts on Cheney, telling the others he believed the man's story. They decided to gather more information on Allen before confronting him. Mullinax conducted interviews with the suspect's neighbors, all of whom said Allen had an excellent reputation with those who knew him, and most had known him since he was a small boy and contrary to previous reports, Allen was very devoted to his mother and she to him. The following morning, Mullinax made a phone call to Allen's employer at Union Oil in Pinole, California, where he worked as a junior chemist, and arranged an interview. Mullinax also notified Toski and Armstrong. The three drove to the refinery and requested that supervisors call Allen to the personnel office, as was previously agreed, Armstrong was to lead the questioning. Armstrong informed him that they had received information from an unnamed informant about certain statements he had allegedly made in January 1968. Armstrong described the alleged statements but did not divulge the source of the information. Allen responded he did not recall having such conversations. During the interview Allen would prove he was extremely knowledgeable about the Zodiac case, and had humorously decided to run circles around the detectives interrogating him. He displayed a distinct understanding of the pop culture references used by the Zodiac, and although he had clearly been reading the media reports about the killer, he knew nothing about the actual crimes. He denied the conversation with Cheney which incriminated him in the first place, but did acknowledge reading the most dangerous games, explaining how it had made an impression on him. Concerning his whereabouts on the day of the Lake Berryessa attack, Allen offered an alibi in the form of a serviceman from Treasure Island. This has been seen by some as an indirect nod to the 1939 film Charlie Chan at Treasure Island, in which the Chinese detective faces off against an adversary known as Dr. Zodiac, a reference which was lost on the detectives. When he returned home that afternoon, Alan claims to have spoken to his neighbor, Mr. White, which was possibly another reference to Ranger William White, who had appeared on television the day after the lakeside murder to discuss the crime scene. Then without any prompting from the detectives, Alan made mention of the two knives I had in my car with blood on them, which he added came from a chicken I killed. There is speculation about his choice of the word chicken, because local media stated erroneously that Brian Hartnell's words just before he was brutally stabbed by the Zodiac were that he asked the masked stranger to stab him first because he was chicken and couldn't care to see his friend in pain. But with the declassification of Napa police reports, it has become clear these were not Hartnell's words, but were embellished by an overzealous reporter, at one point during the interview the detectives commented on Allen's wristwatch, which was an expensive Sea Wolf model, made by the Swiss manufacturer Zodiac, whose logo is a cross circle, the exact same as that used by the Zodiac. Allen replied that he received it as a gift in the summer of 1969. Allen's brother would later be asked about the watch and he claimed their mother gave it to Arthur as a Christmas gift in 1967. When asked about his whereabouts in October 1966, Allen replied, you mean about the Riverside killing? Although this might seem like an admission, it should be noted that the Riverside murder of Sherry Jo Bates had been discussed as a possible Zodiac crime for almost a year, and had made front-page news throughout California when the story first broke. Had his interview taken place before November 1970, and he had made that statement, then it might have been considered as evidence. At the end of the interview Allen declared to detectives, in an almost parting shot that, he wished the time would come when police were no longer referred to as pigs. The Zodiac had used the word pigs in reference to police, most notably in his seven-page letter in November 1969 which was published by the San Francisco Chronicle on November 12, 13 and 26, being displayed on the front page twice. 
Allen was seemingly able to use the media reports of the crimes and letters to his advantage when teasing the interviewers. And while he might share this trait with the Zodiac, who enjoyed taunting the police, it could be argued that Allen felt comfortable in his defiance due to the fact he would never be tied to the crimes because he was not the Zodiac. The main sticking point which suggests Allen might have prior knowledge of the Zodiac name before the crimes, was the Sea Wolf brand of wristwatch in his possession. Allen presented detectives with this clue himself, explaining that he received it before the killer assumed his name. However, none of his remarks to investigators reveal any prior knowledge of the crimes themselves outside of printed newspaper articles, similar to many hundreds of thousands of people who were in possession of the facts surrounding the case in 1971. Indeed it was the suspicions of Allen's one-time friend Don Cheney which prompted the investigation into his activities. It could be argued that with his interest in guns, law enforcement and the workings of the criminal mind, Allen might simply have showed an interest in the brutal local murder and raised the topic one evening with Cheney. He may also have noticed the apparent lack of motive in the crime and offered his thoughts on the most dangerous game to explain it as a case of man hunting man. At this stage in the investigation, they had few promising leads and both Vallejo and San Francisco detectives saw Allen as the most favorable of their Zodiac suspects. On September 14, 1972, a search warrant was issued for Allen's Santa Rosa property, and officers began combing through his trailer, cars and possessions looking for clothing, firearms, ammunition, anything that might prove as evidence against him or link him to the crimes or letters. In particular they were searching for two 9mm guns, plus any ammunition for them, and any expended 9mm casings, as well as a .22 caliber semi-automatic pistol, plus any ammunition for it and any expended casings. They were especially interested in any pistol with a flashlight attached to its barrel. Other items of interest the detectives were searching for included the identification and keys taken from slain taxi cab driver Paul Stein, as well as the missing portion of his bloodstained shirt. Until recently the Zodiac had been sending bloody swathes of the shirt inside his letters, However the communications from the killer had abruptly ceased some 18 months ago. Detectives were also looking for the distinctive square-topped, black executioner's hood with a white circle and a cross emblazoned on it that the Zodiac had worn during the Lake Berryessa attack. Size 10 and a half wing walker boots were added to the search warrant, along with a blue blood-stained windbreaker jacket and a large footlong knife, one inch wide with a wooden handle with two brass rivets and tape around the handle. When officers arrived at 2963 Santa Rosa Avenue, they were told by Mrs. Reese, the trailer court manager that Allen had driven off moments before they arrived. He had been in such a hurry, the trailer door had been left standing open. Toski suspected Allen had somehow been tipped off about their arrival, and believed it possible he had taken incriminating evidence with him. Toski and the others entered the trailer, and immediately noticed a map of Lake Berryessa taped to the wall. When Toski moved Allen's bed away from the wall, he discovered the largest jar of Vaseline he had ever seen along with several large, unclean dildos that rolled out at his feet. They also found sadomasochistic pornography in a box as well as male blow-up dolls, along with bloodstained clothing that littered a table. This was explained away by the fact that Alan was a hunter, and when Toski entered the small unkempt kitchen he pried open the freezer. Inside was small animal hearts, livers and the mutilated bodies of several rodents. Although he was still working towards his degree in biology, Allen had yet to request permission from the state to dissect and experiment on small animals. During this preliminary search, nothing was found. 45 minutes after speeding away, Allen returned and the detectives were outside to greet him. Toski noted how dirty his car was, and they could see through the dirty back window that he had papers, books and clothes stacked on the back seat. Toski said, Lee, how are you? We're San Francisco police inspectors. They recalled how he appeared frightened by their presence because he had never had police show up at his place of residence before. Unsure of what brought the police to his door with a warrant, Allen said what's this all about? We want to talk to you Lee, Armstrong said, we have a search warrant for your trailer and for your person. We have information that you are a very good suspect in the Zodiac murders. Allen replied he thought the Zodiac had been arrested, and said he had already spoken with Vallejo P.D. They then conducted a more extensive search, dragging furniture aside, Toski once again pulled out the bed, as if for the first time and out rolled the dildos for a second time. Lee said matter-of-factly, I just sort of fool around. He didn't seem to be embarrassed by this, or by the sadistic pornography the detectives found. The detectives soon became aware, in the close quarters of the trailer, how physically imposing their suspect was. Toski said Allen was an awesome and frightening man, a beast. The inspector recalled, 
He was so upset and angry at our being on his turf at Santa Rosa. Over the next hour we tore his place up pretty good. I remember for some reason he took an immediate dislike to me personally. During the questioning Tosky did most of the talking and played the role of good cop. He noticed Alan was wearing a ring with a Z on it, along with his Zodiac watch he had for Christmas 1968. Officers took major case prints, which were impressions of his entire left hand, fingertip to palm, as were samples of his left and right-handed writing. They knew Alan was ambidextrous, but he showed some difficulty writing left-handed. They had him write down several sentences, such as a phrase from Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado, which the Zodiac quoted in one of his letters, all people who are shaking hands shake hands like that. He also wrote down several Zodiac quotes, such as I am no longer in control of myself, and this is the Zodiac speaking. Alan became concerned about what he was being asked to write down, asking, what are you making me say? That I'm the Zodiac. Tosky assured him that if the prints did not match, they would rule him out as a suspect. Alan was described by Tosky as not a dumb man, a very wily man. I'll never forget being in his presence. He mentioned Berryessa. He shook our hands. We left our cards. The samples were sent to handwriting analysts for further examination, but returned an almost unanimous verdict that Alan's handwriting was definitely not that of the Zodiac killer. He was also asked to undertake a polygraph test, which he passed. Despite all the circumstantial evidence, Alan was ruled out and the investigators focused on other suspects. On December 14, 1972, the frozen remains of a young girl was found in a ravine approximately 50 feet off Calistoga Road, northeast of Rincon Valley in Santa Rosa. The body had been thrown at least 30 feet over an embankment, and the cause of death was a broken neck with compression and hemorrhage of the spinal cord. The victim had not been raped and likely died one to two weeks prior to discovery. She was identified as 13-year-old Lori Lee Cursa, a student of Lawrence Cook Middle School, who had been reported missing by her mother on November 11, 1972. She had disappeared while they shopped at a USAVE and was last seen on November 20 or 21 in Santa Rosa while visiting friends, having deliberately run away. A possible witness to her abduction later came forward stating that on an evening somewhere between December 3 and 9, while on Parkhurst Drive, he saw two men push a girl fitting Curse's description into the back of a van driven by a Caucasian man with an Afro-type hairstyle. The vehicle then sped north on Calistoga Road. Just over a week later, the bodies of two young girls were found on December 22, 1972, roughly 2.2 miles north of Porter Creek Road on Franz Valley Road, down a steep embankment that was approximately 66 feet off the east side of the roadway. Due to advanced decomposition, the cause of death could not be determined from the skeletal remains. All that was found at the scene was a single earring, orange beads and a 14-karat gold necklace with cross. The victims were identified as 12-year-old Maureen Louise Sterling and Yvonne Lisa Weber, two friends and Herbert Slater middle school students. Thanks for listening this was part 2 of the Zodiac. Hit the bell notification so you never miss a video.